Another equation is based on Newton's second law of motion that is force equals to ma mass into acceleration. Now how many forces will come in picture in a fluid flow? So right forces in a fluid flow. So number one force is the gravity force. Gravity force is nothing but weight that is Fg. Number two is pressure force. Number of times in the all direction we have taken P multiplied by A. P multiplied by A is called as pressure force which is normally given as a product of pressure multiplied by area. Then in Newton's law of viscosity we have viscous force which was given as tau is equal to mu into du by. So this force is present purely due to viscous viscosity in nature. So we will call this one is viscous force. Force due to turbulence. If the fluid is moving with a very high velocity, it has a lot of turbulence and therefore lot of loss in momentum. So you required extra force for this one. That is called as FT force, turbulence force. Number 5. Whether the gas is moving at a low pressure or a high pressure, gas itself is moving at. According to that, you have to include the force due to force due to compressibility. Remember compressibility? Beta is equal to 1 by k. Just imagine that we have a water here and we are supplying the water at normal temperature and pressure. So the density of water is only 1000. But you apply the very high pressure. If the pressure of water is very very high, then will the density will be very high. If the density will be very very high, then is a huge momentum is required to move the water. So it really matters that water is flowing through the pipe is under normal condition or under pressurized condition. So that is why we have to take the effect of compositivity also. Number 6. Surface tension. The force due to surface tension. If the fluid has a strong affinity with the other material, do you require extra force? That is called as surface tension force. So these are the major forces that contribute and the rest we will call as minor forces. So this F is basically consists of 7 forces. So this F is basically Fg plus Fp. Fg plus Fp plus Fv plus Ft plus Fc plus Fs plus all other forces equals to Ma and you solve this governing equation it is called as Newtonian law it is called as Newtonian equation of motion naturally it is a very heavy exercise is there any assumption in Newton's law of motion? no we have all valid equations actually the solution is very very complex so what we do now, we will neglect the forces due to compressibility and minor forces. So these two forces, that is this force and this force we will neglect. So neglecting force due to compressibility and the other forces. If you neglect these two forces, then your governing equation becomes gravity force is still there, pressure force is still there, viscous force is also present, force due to turbulence is also present and force due to surface tension is present. So naturally this equation has a simple solution as compared to previous one. So this one is called as Reynolds equation of motion. Reynolds. So what the assumption has Reynolds has made? He has neglected the minor forces and the surface effect of compressibility. Reynolds equation of motion. The first equation is developed by Newtonian. In addition to Fc, neglecting, neglecting Fc, Fc is what? Compressibility, minor forces and the turbulence effect that is Ft. Now this one is neglected and the contribution of this one is also neglected. What is left? You are left with Fg plus Fp plus Fv. What is G? Gravity, pressure, viscous is equal to Ma. This one is famous equation called as navier stoke equation. So how many assumptions he has made in navier stoke equation? He has neglected the surface tension effect, neglect the effect of compressibility neglect the effect of turbulence. Now comes Euler in picture. So what he has done? He has neglected the minor force, this force, then he has neglected the surface tension force, I am going in reverse, neglected the compression force, neglected the turbulence force and even neglected the viscous force. So these are the assumptions made by Euler. Then what is left? Only two forces. One is Fp and one is gravity force. If we solve this equation, Whatever equation you get of motion is called as Euler equation. If the shear force are neglected, fluid is ideal, that is non viscous. If the fluid is incompressible, you are neglected the compressibility effect. Body force are due to gravity only. Are you considering gravity force? 
your flow is what steady the equation is applied along the streamline so you apply the equation along streamline and we have one more force equal to what pressure force so let us consider here the streamlines here but is it fp plus fg equals to ma so we have a streamline like this so streamline is this way and we want to apply the Euler equation along the streamline with the assumptions clear assumptions are okay for this purpose we will take one small cylinder like this one and this cylinder I will enlarge here I have taken cylinder cylinder is a constant diameter pipe thin tube is a very very thin tube now on this side do you have pressure P then this side we have pressure P plus delta P and how it varies so it varies along this line so is this length along this length will the coordinate of x y z changes along this one x y z changes so in general this is called as ds s means space space means x y z so is this pressure is p then can we write this pressure is p that is dp by ds this pressure multiplied by this area and this pressure multiplied by this area will solve the problem of fp this is my first term defined ho gaya then I have to define the second force. Second force is gravity force. Gravity means weight force. So is the weight of this part will act vertically downward and is the weight of this whole element is rho multiplied by g and rho into g into volume of this one. So if I say this area is A then is it multiplied by ds? So I will say A multiplied by ds. But when I apply this equation all this quantity must be vector form. So for this purpose I have to resolve this. So I will resolve this like this. And I will say that this angle equals to theta angle. This is theta. So is it also equal to theta? And this equals to rho g whatever this value is there w is this value is w sine theta. So we are done. FP force. We are shown gravity force. Mass is already defined. Mass is simply rho multiplied by a multiplied by ds. And a is the acceleration. Now we have to redefine the acceleration. Acceleration is going along this direction. So, is this acceleration is dependent on s coordinate? Whatever the velocity we have, is it a strong function of s and time? So, can we write the total derivative of this one? What is the derivative? dv del v by del s multiplied by ds del v by del t into dt. But is my one of the assumption is steady flow? If my assumption is steady flow, then is this quantity will be zero? I want acceleration in the same direction. This is the velocity in the same direction. So if I differentiate, divide this value by t, can I get a value? My a value is dv by dt. Now I am left with only one derivative dv by ds. Is it ds divided by dt? Now velocity is going this one. Is it same as ds by dt? Yes. So is this term is same as v? So I have got A also. A equal to what? V multiplied by dV. Back to this. Do you know FP? Yes. Do you know FG? Yes. Do you know mass? Do you know acceleration? Put back. Solve this. Whatever it get? Euler equation. So is this a section height? DZ is between the vertical distance between section 1 and section 2. It is measured from center to center. Huh? Center to center. So I think we can develop one equation for this. Sin theta is equal to what? Is it dz by ds? Sin theta equal to dz by ds. Because I am getting here one term w sin theta and sin theta now can be replaced as dz by ds. Now remember we are going in this direction. Huh? So this direction is positive direction. So this direction will be what? Negative direction for the vector quantity. So first of all I will go for pressure force. Is this pressure force is positive? So this is p multiplied by a this pressure force is it p and del p dp by ds this should be multiplied by ds actually otherwise it is mark match pressure and pressure no so this pressure is acting this way so this is minus of p dp by ds over the leg ds is it multiplied by a pressure multiplied by a is force that is fp is over we will go for fg but going along this direction but this component is coming this way so is it minus value is minus of rho multiplied by g multiplied by a multiplied by ds into sin theta now right hand side m m is mass mass of this element is density multiplied by volume density is rho area into ds into acceleration 
Let me write acceleration as V into dV by dS. So this one is V multiplied by dV divided by dS. I think the A is common term in all. Can we cancel it? So let's cancel A, A, here A and A. Then if my first term is cancelled, is it A is cancelled here? Yeah? Cancel. What is left is minus. Is it dS and dS is also cancelled? So I left with minus dP. Now this term is minus rho g dS. So I will write minus rho. But can I replace sin theta as dz by dS? So let me write this as dz by dS. Sin theta already replaced. On the right hand side, what is left? Is it rho? And is this dS and dS is cancelled? So what is left? Is it V multiplied by dV? And now this dS and this dS also get cancelled. So whatever is left is called as either equation. So we will shift all terms to the right side. And what you get is, and we will divide by rho also. So divide by rho. So what you get? Is it dP by rho? dP by rho. Second term I will adjust as V multiplied by dV. And the last term I prefer to write as G multiplied by dZ. Is always equal to 0. This is famous Euler equation. The change in pressure plus the change in velocity plus the change in potential air is always constant and equals to what? 0. Right.